Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, we are talking about navigating life with a deaf dog. So I have a video on YouTube already about helping train your dog, a deaf dog, to stop biting. And that is a pretty popular video. And I get lots and lots and lots of questions about living with deaf dogs because of that video. And first of all, thank you. I love that. The very first dog I ever adopted on my own as an adult was deaf. I actually didn't know this when I adopted her, but it didn't take too terribly long to figure this out. And she was amazing. I love her so I like still to this. In fact, you can see her right there, right there. That's Claire. And so navigating life with a deaf dog for some people can be a little bit challenging. We're gonna talk about it today, but first, if you're new here, let me introduce myself. I don't wanna be rude. My name is Jessica. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. This is the Pet Parenting Reset, where we talk about dog training, dog behavior, um, enrichment, nutrition, all the things, enrichment and nutrition for your cats as well, all the things to keep your pets happy and healthy and living their best life. If all of that is for you, make sure you are clicking that subscribe button down there. <laughs> all right, so, okay. Now, you may be living with a deaf dog today, or maybe you're living with a dog and they're not deaf, but we understand that in old age, deafness can happen, right? It's something that we see with humans, certainly a lot, and it can also happen in dogs. So we wanna be prepared, and as a dog trainer, because my first dog was deaf, I actually learned a lot of training with hand signals. So that's how I train. I in, I don't use a clicker. A lot of people use clickers. There's nothing wrong with them. I just personally, my own personal dogs, have had a, an aversion to those loud clicker noises. They don't like them. They get scared of them. Um, and while, y yes, you can take time to desensitize them to that, I just decided early on that clickers weren't for me. Instead, I use a vocal cue to replace that sound of the click. So I mark a cue with yes, and that's how I do it. But I also use hand signals. So this is how I teach. And you can tell, like I talk with my hands a lot. So it, it, it helps <laughs> that I also use hand signals in training dogs. I think this is great for situations where your dog is deaf of course, but also in instances where it's just really loud or noisy, getting your dog used to hand signals early on can be very beneficial in many situations and later on in life in case your dog does become deaf. But what I really wanna tell you is that dogs use so much more than vocalization to communicate. So yes, as humans, that's our primary, like we think, we think, by the way, that vocalization, talking is our primary form of communication. And yeah, it is um, a really, really good form of communication. But if you really step back and think about it, and if you pay any attention to people out there with you know, NLP, we also use a lot of body language. And this is actually something that our dogs are really, really good at. Not only providing you body language, using their body language, because this is how they speak to other dogs, but also in reading our body language. So when we look at our dog, we wanna be aware of their posture. We wanna be aware of their ear positioning. We wanna be aware of their tail positioning. And all of these things combined, along with what just happened, what environment are we in, uh, did they just eat? Did they just like, they're so like, we want to put the whole picture together to figure out what our dog is actually feeling, what their intentions are, what they mean in a certain situation. Of course, the longer we live with a dog, the better we get to know them. And paying attention to our dog is something that I highly encourage everyone to do. The more you pay attention to your dog, the quicker the two of you can become acquainted and know each other because it's not all about the vocalizations with our dogs. It's actually much more detailed and delicate and paying attention to everything in their environment and their behavior and their body posturing and all of it. So if you're unsure if your dog is deaf, there are lots of different things you can do. First of all, you can go to the veterinarian and they can perform testing, but honestly, the testing they're gonna perform, the initial testing is gonna be a lot like the, the testing you can do at home. So you can jingle your keys. If your dog doesn't respond, hmm, that's a pretty good indication. You can 
be a few feet away from them to where they're not going to feel the movement, the air movement around you and clap your hands. That can be an indication. If their ears perk up at all, they may have just heard something. If their ears don't move at all, they probably didn't hear anything. But there are lots of other things you can do. You can jingle a can, I mean, just making noises and seeing how or if your dog reacts at all, pay very close attention to the ears. You can pretty much tell if your dog is deaf or not. I do wanna put a little caveat in here though, because sometimes people will perform these tests in front of their dog. Their dog will respond, but not necessarily in a way that lets us know they heard it because our dogs are very in tune to us. So if you ring the doorbell expecting that your dog is gonna run and jump and bark and lunge at the door, well, that expectation in your body language can actually be what triggers your dog to do that instead of the auditory response to the doorbell. So we're really looking for, do their ears move at all? That's the kind of thing we're looking for. Now, if they are, their ears don't move at all, but they can tell that you have the intention, you have that feeling, maybe even that anxiety about, oh my gosh, the doorbell just rang and my dog is gonna go crazy and bark at the door because somebody's there. Your energy, your smell, your anxiety, because your dog can smell your anxiety, can set them into motion and they understand that, oh, something is going on because my human's body language changed. My human feels different. Their energy feels different, right? And that can actually set them into motion, barking and lunging at the door. So be very careful when you're performing these tests. So as I was saying, with deaf dogs, absolutely, we can still train with them. I like to use hand signals. There are certain hand signals that are pretty uni universal <laughs> and there are certain hand signals that you know what if it's just between you and your dog use the hand signal that works best for you i like to use this for stay i like to use this for sit i like to use this my hand flat like this when i'm wanting them their nose to touch my hand there are lots of different hand signals we can give our dog even if i want my dog to come to me i can go like this right? It's something as simple as, come on, come here. Or if my dog is sitting at the door and I've done that, I've told her to wait or stay, which are two different cues, by the way. If I've told her to wait or stay and I want to release her, I take my hand and do like this and say, okay, for okay to walk through a threshold. Threshold training is something that is so very important for our dogs and we work on it religiously with our dog. So figure out the hand signals that come naturally to you, stick with them, make sure you are using the same hand signals for the same cues you want your dog to learn and use, and training is absolutely possible. But again, if you've followed me at all, you know what I'm about to say. If you are new here, here we go. Positive reinforcement training is the only scientifically proven way and the only way I ever recommend to train a dog. So we are rewarding for the behaviors we want to see. We never use punishment, positive or negative. We don't use punishment, period. Now, even if your dog is deaf or they are experiencing hearing loss and you still use vocal cues along with your hand signals, that's totally fine. Those vocal cues are really gonna be for you. And that's okay because we want to be confident and in the moment and very intentional with what we're asking our dogs. So go ahead and continue using those vocalizations no problem whatsoever. Just make sure you are being very, very consistent in the hand signals you're using. And of course, in rewarding the behavior you want to see. Okay, now here is the somewhat controversial part of this video, eye contact. Traditionally with dogs, while we do want to train eye contact with our dogs, it's brief. It is not at all uh, an intimidation tactic. We do not use eye contact to stare down our dogs because for dogs, that's a very threatening body posture. That's something very threatening that happens that generally only a dog in, the, like if you have dogs in the wild, a dog who is just intently staring down the other dog, they're gonna attack. That's threatening body language. That's not the kind of eye contact that we're talking about here but we do want to focus pre more heavily on eye contact with a deaf dog and we want to really train 
eye contact because if they can't hear us, they need to be looking at us. So we wanna use a lot of games-based training to get them looking up at us a lot. We want them making eye contact with us very, very frequently so we can redirect and change and do anything we need to do. With our hand signals, your dog has to be looking at you for hand signals to work. So training eye contact with a deaf dog is very, very important. Just make sure that you're not at all being intimidating. If you are using positive reinforcement, this should not be an issue for you. But we do want our dogs comfortable with maintaining eye contact with us very frequently. And this is especially true for deaf dogs. Now, one thing I do wanna say, this is a big tip, you guys, okay? If you are working with a deaf dog and you are trying to figure out how to start training that eye contact and how to start training your dog to look at you, check in with you so that they can see the hand signals you're giving, use a flashlight. Because now, let me just throw this little caveat in here. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm gonna go ahead, never shine a flashlight directly into your dog's eyes. It may not do a whole heck of a lot of damage, but I'm sure it will be uncomfortable. You don't want somebody shining a flashlight directly in your eyes, so don't do it to your dogs, but use a flashlight on the ground or on whatever surface uh, is in front of your dog to gain their attention and pull that light, the, the focus of that flashlight, pull the light up to you so that your dog's eyes follow it up to you reward when they make eye contact with you because that guys is one of the keys to teaching a deaf dog how to start paying attention to you that's the biggest tip of this video it's a game changer <laughs> so make sure to leave a thumbs up for that and for this video in general of course i want to i'm gonna, one more tip before i end this video do your best not to startle your dog. It is much easier for a deaf dog to be startled and we don't want our dog to be stressed. We want to make sure they are safe. We wanna make sure they're happy and comfortable and we don't wanna startle them. <laughs> and that can be difficult. Here's the trick that I learned. Use something that smells good. If you are trying to get your, if your dog is asleep um, are just really not focused on you, use something that smells good to gently wake them from their slumber so that you aren't startling them and they aren't freaked out because we don't want their adrenaline to surge, right? Unnecessarily, at least. Use something that smells good to let them slowly wake up from their slumber. You can, of course, go ahead and reward or give them that yummy smelling treat or piece of food once they wake up if you want. If if you're not on, you know, have them on a diet or anything like that. So don't startle them as much as you can. Wake them gently and easily out of sleep with something that smells really yummy. That used to always work really well for my Claire Bear, right there in that picture. Um, so those are some tips for navigating life with a deaf dog. Again, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, before I go, Make sure you're following the podcast, The Pet Parenting Reset, wherever you get your podcast. I would very, very much appreciate it. With that, um, along with that, <laughs> comes our Patreon. So if you're not already a Patreon supporter, I hope you go check it out. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps me to continue to bring content like this and the podcast to you and pet parents like you. And as a perk, as a bonus, even though it's only, you can join for as little as a dollar a month, um, you can you get behind the scenes you get bonus content extra content some really well thought out blog posts you get them before the rest of the world gets them it's really a great place for 2.0 pet parents like you so i hope you check it out it is the first link in the description with that i'm going to go ahead and end today's video if you have any comments questions please leave them down below let me know what drew you to this video and with that i will see you guys in the next video give your pet some extra love from me today until next time bye guys Thank you.